Hello and welcome, my name is Javier Rivera and next in our DTF series, I'm gonna be teaching you guys two tricks that is a must do when you are using Catlink for um, printing on DTF. So these are just two little simple tricks that I that I do. Um, hopefully this can help you get your, your uh, prints really nice and vibrant and get some really nice quality prints. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, guys. So let's talk about two uh, two items real quick um, about pretty much helping your prints um, pop up that color or a couple of things that I want to do about a quality print. So I'm just going to pick up um, an image that I have here. Again, you see anime everywhere. I'm an anime fan and my favorite one is Evangelion. So let's go ahead here um, and let's just go ahead and import a file. We can do that. OK, or we can actually just go right here and bring it over now. Here, um, I always like to leave this message off. If you do this, it will not show it again. But here's telling me that there's a low resolution on that image, right? Um, and it's recommending that you supersize it. Now, I have noticed that if you're going to do a, a sticker um, or something small, um, something, you know, like, it, well, this is actually a little bit bigger. But if it's something that's going to be like four inches, it's for the front of the shirt, you know, maybe a, a company logo or something like that. Um, you don't need a big resolution image, okay? Um now, however, I have noticed that bigger, um, bigger images have tend to have problems. So what we're going to do here is we're going to right click this and we're going to go to supersize image. Now, the lowest resolution that I will pick is something that is around four to five hundred megabytes. And this is going to be dictated by your computer. If your computer has a video card, if you have a, a this, this is my gaming computer and it's pretty powerful, you can go pretty high. It's just going to extend the time that it takes to actually bring that image up. If you have a computer that um, doesn't have a lot of memory or your CPU is not that strong or powerful, um, stay on the 300 range or 200 range because if not, the, the program will crash and it will take a while. You will see it in a second. So let's, and every image is different. So these numbers are the resolutions are always going to change um, depending on your image. So here, let's say that the new resolution, let's, let's say uh, 1200. Um, that brings me on the 400 megabyte that I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so if not, you can just keep playing with the numbers until you find something um, that is to what you want. Um, again, I'm going to do that 1200. I really like that. It's it's around 400 megabytes. I think that's a pretty, pretty decent image for something that, you know, you can actually, you know, you're not stretching the image because then it's going to get blurry. OK, so let's go ahead and click OK. And now my computer is going to sound like it's going to about to take off. OK, so um, now here we can actually work the image if you want. So let's go ahead and zoom out so you can see a little bit. And then you can start actually playing around with, with the sharpness of your edges. And you can start just working that image, making the edges more sharp or less sharp, make them more blurry. Okay. Um, always try to zoom out, see how the end result is looking. Um, you know, and then just keep doing that until you, you get, you get the way you wanted it. So you can smooth out the surfaces. Um, again, this, this is changing colors and everything. You can try to clean it up even more, trying to get rate, trying to get rid of shadows and everything. So let me do it again. So you can see all these shadows. Um, so in here we can try to clean it up, you know, just be careful not to, not to actually ruin the image. And again, always go back and see how it's looking. See that that's actually kind of blurry. I don't like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and reset. See, I like that. Um, that's actually factory, but again, you can work the image to what you want. Okay. And we're going to click. Okay. And now what I like to do is just keep clicking here until this, this the program is going to tell you that it's not responding. Okay. There you go. That's what I like to see. So now everything's going to go great out. I'm just going to let the computer um, do its thing. I am not going to go ahead and try to do anything. I'm just going to let it think. Um, I'm, and I'm just going to wait. Um, it's going to take a little bit. So let's just wait until um, the route responding stops. And this pretty much right now is going to go back to the program. And there you have it. So now you saw how the program actually, you know, pretty much came back to life. It's going to um, reload the preview of, of this right here. Um, so there you have it. You know, it's that's that's pretty much what I like to do when you're talking about supersizing an image. OK, um, now I can grab this image and I can actually go ahead and, and stretch it as far as I want. You know, um, let's say that I want to do this a 19 inch. OK. Ah, too big. Let's go here, 13. 
And see, now I can stretch that image without being afraid of actually ruining the image, okay? Now, something else that I wanna talk about real quick um, is the, the second one. I'll pretty much what I wanna do is, let's pick up, uh, let's pick up this one since this one has different colors. Ready? So this is this is my logo. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to right click on it, okay? And we're going to effects and we're gonna to go to color correction, okay? I like to do this um, when you have a picture that has very nice colors, you know, like you have a lot of yellows, blues, and colors that you wanna make them pop, okay? And what I do is, see here you can saturate your RGBs separated by colors. But what I like to do is just go to saturation because it works all the colors. And what I do is I, I, I keep clicking just one at a time, okay? Because I don't want to distort my colors. Be careful not to go too much because your whites are, are, are gonna get like yellowish, almost like a tannish color. So don't, don't go too far out. But see, I like that. I, I, I'm already seeing the blues, like, you know, bringing up. And then another thing I want to be careful is there's shadows in here. Um, I want to thank my, my boy Cleaver Face for making this logo, man. Shout out to you. This thing looks amazing. I love it. Um, but there are there are shadows in here and there's a lot of stuff. So the more the more I go, then it's going to grab my grays and it might turn them like blue. So, again, you got to be careful with the saturation. See right there. We can we can see that that um, the toolbox of my logo see how, how it's actually looking bluish so if I reset see I want it to look gray so um, always play around with saturation now um, just be careful with how much so again I will go by one by one until I see those yellows and reds and blues be very vivid you know like very like those colors like popping like this lime green right now it's like very very you know very out there and then I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK and the same thing again, you know, the, the software is going to take its time, you know, it's going to go ahead and, and do those saturations. Um, it's going to go on not responding. So the, the software is going to do that. Now, if your computer doesn't have a lot of capacity to do this, um, you know, just give it some time. Um, you don't you don't want it to, to crash. You might come into situations where it crashes. That means that you, your computer cannot um, take my take that much memory load. So, again, these are two things that I do. Um, you know, before I go ahead and just pretty much rip them. Okay. And now, I mean, you can always open them back. Um, you know, I did not size them. I didn't do anything. I didn't prep the image. So, um, pretty much that's, that's what I do. I like to play around with the colors until I get those colors to be nice and bright and pop out. You know, that's why we like DTF, man. So hopefully this can help you out, um, work your image. And now one, well, just one real quick thing before we leave. Um, don't forget, if you have Catlink, there's this software called GIMP. I love this program, okay? Um, so let's open it real quick. So this is pretty much like a, uh, the best way I can explain it is like a watered down version of uh, Photoshop. So this, man, to, to actually grab images and work them out, you know, um, let's, let's actually convert it. So let's say, you know, if I want to go ahead and do anything, you know, I can use my, my selection tool. Just make sure that you're on draw mask on your tool options. That way you can see the pink. But, you know, you can you can just grab right here. See, I'm going to select that. I'm going to hit delete. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, probably on the eyes and remove the eyes, you know, start removing colors and start working that image. You know, I'm and again, I'm doing this very quick. I don't want to take too much time. You guys get the, you know, you, you, you kind of get the idea. You know, and then you can go ahead and grab these images and work them out the way you want them. You know, what do you want on your shirt? So because there's times that, you know, when you use all that, you know, the remove black or the remove white, it might it, it will remove it all. So sometimes you might want to leave a little bit of black in there or do something else. So, again, this is a really cool app. I like it. Um, You know, you can put text. You can it's pretty much a. a, a watered down version of photoshop is a little bit easier to manipulate i'm not the pro on it but i'm pretty okay with it this is what i use for my images i really like it so um again this just a little thing is in there if you don't see the icon okay um just go to where you install your software so if you install it on your c drive see i have um a, a different drive so whatever you installed it usually it's going to be on your c drive okay so you're going to go to your c drive and then you're going to go to your programs okay and if you're on C drive, it might be on program files x86. 
Um, that's usually where it's going to be. Um, again, I install these on a different drive unit. So um, you go to programs and then you're going to see this GIMP right here. Okay. So GIMP and then we're going to go to bin. Okay. And then right here, GIMP 2.0, make sure you're grabbing the application. You right click it. Okay. And let me see where we at. Uh, see, I already have it. Uh, we're going to pin it to start. See, I already have it pinned to the start. So you're gonna pin it to the start, okay? And then when you have it pinned it to the start, um, we can go right here to the start and you're gonna see it somewhere here on your start. So then you can just grab this icon, okay? And left click it, drag it to your desktop if you wanna create an icon and there you have it. And now you can access that, that um, and it's it's completely free and included with your cat link. So if you don't have Photoshop, um, you're just starting up and you can't afford that software. I'm telling you right now, I know Inkscape is really good, but that GIMP, that's what I use all the time. So again, an extra hint. So once again, thank you for watching, guys. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. Always leave me a comment. You know, don't forget to subscribe. And once again, thank you for watching.